What's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of Background Noise. I'm your host, Kane, and I got David here with me. What's going on, my dude? What's going on, man? Same shit, different smell. Actually, yeah. not really. We're going to be going to your dad's ranch later. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Getting away. Getting out. Dude, I'm, I'm fucking stoked to ride those ATVs. And I, last time I fucking flattened two tires. I am so sorry. <laughs> did, did you guys end up ever getting those fixed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, we got those fixed. Yeah, no problem. I forgot about that. That's funny. <laughs> dude, oh, I was like man. the little black cloud on that trip. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> Not even. He's like, yeah, you, you no, were. You know. <laughs> hey, you, everybody. Everybody does it at some point. Dude, so. and the next thing I'm really stoked for is the fucking stars. Dude. Yes. Just to get the fuck out of the city yes. for a little bit. Yep. And mm-hmm. just, oh my yeah. god, dude. Yeah. Um. You know, I need to look at the weather. You still got the telescope out there? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, dude. That's actually something we can do for sure. Let's. T- last time it took it's fucking forever to get that shit too. set up. Let's let's yeah. let's game plan and let's yeah. get that shit set up. Yeah. 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 We, good thing I'm like but, a complete dude, idiot, like a monkey with a computer. You know. <laughs> <sighs> just a fucking flip flop the subject real quick i remember talking to you about this on my birthday at the beach we took a, a beach trip but yeah. dude i it kind of glanced over my head again as i was on shift last night that the theory about aliens being us from the future oh yeah let's fucking silence <laughs> our cell phones and shit before yeah. i got sorry about that no dude you're that straight i should have known better again bear with me still new at this but i'm gonna get better at this it's gonna be fun in the process and just tune in. I promise I'll get better at this, this fucking shit. Yeah. I'm getting emails and all that. Oh, yeah, man. I forgot. Yeah, about... Yeah. Like, so, okay. So here's the here's the theory. That aliens are actually us for, that have uh, acquired the skills to time travel. And uh, not only that, it kind of goes into why... Um, their eyes are so big and slanted because starting off now we're so glued to our laptops and smartphones and all that shit and like our our much like how deep sea creatures don't need light at all their eyes kind of dissipate here's the opposite our eyes get much larger in order to process that extra light that's going in and try not to fuck our eyes up and who knows maybe in the future we're able to get better like uh, animatronic eyes and shit like that probably 50 year 75 years away from that shit but uh, not to go off on a tangent, and then also too, we Sky become less coming. and less uh, we dependent on our physical capabilities to hunt and gather and all yeah. that shit. So we end up getting smaller in stature. And here's the thing, you know, the way social media and all that shit's going, it, it really would seem that like um, just monogamy with humans in general is just getting less and less frequent. So, and we're not too far away from there being like cyborg or animatronic like sex toys and shit like that to where we may not feel as need oh, to yeah, procreate and shit so the genitalia would go away mm-hmm. or you know this over it's only time. a matter of time oh yeah i mean like probably a few thousand years but as still, long as you give it enough if we even time, make it that long yeah i mean it's, that's the thing about it is you know given enough time truly anything is possible i mean any outcome could I mean, look at where humans have come in the past, like, 300 years. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just, it's an it's an exponential growth of just technology and just understanding in general that, you know, which is oddly, ironically funny that you have, you know, all these flat earth people coming out now going back to that, that you said 300 years, but. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was longer, it was farther back than that. I think I can't remember exactly when it was first discovered that the earth was around the first, the first test. I think it was Socrates or one of those ancient guys. I could look that up. But still in the grand scheme of everything, like it, it, it ain't shit for time. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, but we babes just yeah. learning how to crawl. We're, uh-huh. we're, we're less than a blip in just the infinite, infinite universe. And that's what people seem to forget a lot of the times and i mean shit if and here and kind of going back onto the subject too um they just they reach that next level of intelligence to where they can time travel and uh really just kind of look into where see much how a lot of us we're trying to find our creators our beginnings like Mm -hmm. they know where they fucking came from right like they know the truth about everything so they're coming back to get gather studies and uh and I mean, here's kind of the funny thing where anal probes come into play. They, they'll stimulate those really, really highly sensitive areas. Uh, you know, I mean, fucking 
you know, don't be a homophobe. All right. Yeah. Just accept it. We're going to talk about assholes for just a just a moment. <laughs> just just a short moment. Just yeah. bear with us. But yeah. anyways, this big stimulus, and that's where like the whole anal probe thing. They're they're studying like our our sexual uh, what what sex is because they don't have it anymore. Right. That's it's the future. Yeah. That's right. It's that. The society has advanced so far. That they just keep sperm and like mm-hmm. eggs and just uh, like create, you know. Yeah, with you know, and then you know that brings it back to, clones. you know, test tube babies and, yeah. and those old books, you know, Brave New World. We're fucking and, doing it and We're all that stuff. Doing you know, it, it's just it's so crazy. You know, looking back at some of the stuff that was written. You know, even, you know, in the 40s and 50s and some of it, you know, that's coming true now. It's just like, ooh, man, like, I know I've talked to you about it before multiple times, but if you haven't read 1984. Fuck yes, dude. I was just telling a a patient of mine about that book and it scared the shit out of her. I felt so bad. Dude. Chick was like 94, too. It's, I've never had a book or anything really like that that I've been reading where multiple times... I just got that, like, oh, it's happening. That, like, that, like, oh shit moment. Like, dude, this is not just, you know, not just possible. This is something that is happening already, you know. And obviously, it's not everything in that book, but, you know, there's just little things here and there that just can't, that you can't help but draw conclusions with. You know, you talk about, just one example from from the book is they uh who's the author uh, over oh, um i i'm i just completely so sorry yeah just, i'm i'm trying really hard to yeah um, no i got you i i, I knew it like give, yeah, george orwell duh okay cool, george cool. orwell gotta pay credit where credit's due yes of course the fascinating mind of george orwell yes S- excuse me um but yeah, dude, just some of the things in that book, it, it's just absolutely terrifying give, seeing uh, not, the conclusion. Not to be a complete spoiler no, alert, but yeah. give, give one no, example. No, yeah, yeah, give yeah. The one, one the one that I was, that, and it was so funny, too, because it was right when this term was starting to get coined more and more. And uh, it was, in the book, they have turned the English language into something completely different than what it was before. So you like your your phrasing. It was the the amount of words that were used by the average person was drastically declined. Like names for buildings and stuff. Everything was given acronyms, or you know, everything was condensed down in language to keep everybody you know soft. Keep everybody just like to control their mind it was all part of controlling every aspect of who they were it created a malleable society right exactly and and then you know it gets into once they have this malleable society they're able to control everything and they're able to even control history you know they're able they're able to control lately now it's whoever screams the loudest gets the rights to the textbooks yeah and you know, and then it's just all this stuff again that you just keep seeing in this book. But anyways, you know, it was they they condensed the uh, all the wording down, and then not. But a couple weeks later, I started hearing all these people starting to say like "fam" and "lit" and oh, yeah. all that stuff. And you know, Trends. I'm just like, and it's just like, oh man, this is this is this is crazy. You know, just obviously different from what the book was, but yeah, it's just gotta read it man some people Fuck yeah Can I some that? people just Actually, oh of not course to be all mine, no but. dude of course yeah i'll get that to you but man it's just weird it's just some people just have that looking glass into the future oh yeah <laughs> almost kind of thing but uh so. but oh yeah dude fucking aliens yeah they're just us from the future they're just the smarter us yeah well that's the theory yeah, yeah. i was just kind of thinking about that on the truck and yeah man i mean spit it out real quick yeah it's a good start. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know. Also, dude, another thing I, I uh, was kind of listening to on the truck, I was going through some YouTube videos, and uh, fuck, what was that? I need to fucking find the channel so I can give them some credit. Here mm-hmm. I am, just fucking. Anyways, they looked at a lot of the weird alien conspiracy, like uh, focal points, like the the pyramids, and then mm-hmm. like the all the stone heads and all that stuff, yeah. and these things that just don't really seem to make sense. Right. 
and they are Google mapping these and drawing a line from each one of them. And like they kind of deter a little bit, but it kind of creates its own equator. Huh. Dude, it's fucking insane. Uh, here, I'm going to um, pull up that channel so I can give them some fucking credit because that was way cool. It was a, it was definitely a So it's podcast. kind of just at a crazy angle. Yeah, dude. Earth, and it just, it's a different than the actual access, but right. access, but yeah. uh, it, uh, let me see. <laughs> but they just like, they can connect. Hm. Yes. That's cool. Hm. But yeah, I also listened to fucking, I was listening to Joe Rogan podcast and um, fucking Eddie Bravo. I just, it's, just, course, it's just an hour I mean, yeah. of him. Eddie Bravo just fucking, it was, it was an hour long cringe. Aliens, man. Just Dude, everything. It was, he's it just, was an yeah. hour he's, long he's, cringe. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I I like to look at a lot of that stuff too. I mean, it's very entertaining, and some of his stuff. Jenna Julian, comes, sorry, podcast, uh, the Jenna Julian podcast. Jenna Julian podcast. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. They they have like four episodes of like uh, just hour long conspiracy theories that just research, you know, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty cool. I dig yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's always a fun thing to do, but it can scare you also at the same time oh, no. <laughs> that's just the problem too with everything is you just can't ever trust it that's the big thing to keep in mind when you're looking at stuff like conspiracy theories is just do it for fun i mean yeah you, at the end of the day you don't really know that's it's just the thing too people are barking so goddamn loud their lungs are about to pop it's, and they're just it's, like yeah it's so easy to get caught up in it and have it start like where you look for it everywhere and and it turns into is, a thing where you just start making excuses. Oh, dude. Yeah, dude. And a point I was going to make to kind of go along with that. If, if someone has like a clever thought or uh, what they see to be a kind of revolutionary thought, mm-hmm. like this is my idea. Mm-hmm. And then even if there's like utter proof that maybe your your idea is not the most accurate or maybe there's not enough like stuff backing it up, but people will live and die by it. You know, yeah. like they, they pick a team and they stick to it. Yeah, they, they, yeah. I mean, I'm to guilty of it. I mean, oh, yeah. definitely I mean, everyone, in high school, you know, bias as fuck. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, the there's. Young and, and not so wise. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, bias is just one of those things that's universal. Yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone has it at some point to some extent, no matter what. I mean, it's just. People get caught up in it, so it's fun though. Oh, sure, is. always, always. I'd be a damn liar if I said it wasn't cool oh, to yeah. fuck pick teams. Oh yeah, I have to see the other side of the coin, but some some days I'll just fucking ignore it. Oh so, yeah, no. I mean, I'm just like douche. no, this is this is life. This is the way it is. I don't, I don't, I just can't ignore all that over there. <laughs> but how's um, you, you talking about getting the pup? How's that all going? Ah. Uh, you know, I I want one. I love dogs. I, I really want a dog, but you're talking mad, dude. Dude, uh, <laughs> I know. But it's, yeah, it is kind of tough right now. Though. Just in, in an apartment with with my job, how much I'm working and everything, the just how much I'm there and how much it takes. It'd just be tough. With, yeah, you want to set yourself up for success with that. Yeah, I mean, I just want and and honestly, like I love dogs so much. It would be like even when we lived together, like. Mm. Even when, like, if you were gone at work, like when I left for work, I'd still I felt awful leaving Theo. Like it yeah, was the worst. Theo was my boxer. Yeah, Theo. Theo he has an his, Instagram. Is his amazing, amazing Theodore boxer. He is amazing. He's the adorable. Best. Yes, <laughs> he sure is. Uh, what's his Instagram again? Let's just. Like, um. Oh, the yeah. the life of Theo. But yeah. all the O's are zeros because fuck everybody else. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so definitely go give him a follow because <laughs> he's a good boy. So. <laughs> he'll never know he'll yeah. never fucking know he'll never know but but we will he deserves it yes he is <laughs> but yeah, doesn't be slurping on yeah the... yeah get that get that good water <laughs> oh but dude the water in Austin is so fucking different than San Antonio yeah yeah <laughs> not to don't... go that yeah. random but well yeah fucking A dude it's so y'all, hard y'all don't have that good old Edwards Aquifer man <laughs> it's all that limestone our heater went out dude Oh no! Yeah. My washing machine just broke. <laughs> Hooray! Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's just like man. we're the we're the upper ghetto class. Yeah, <laughs> upper ghetto class. Yeah, there you go. It's just, yeah, it's life, man. Yeah. It's life. So, 
But yeah, dude, uh, it's just been fucking balls cold. And then, yeah. Um, it's yeah. Just, I haven't called them to fix it yet because I mean we're gonna be out of town this weekend. Yeah. I so think, why not just wait? Dude, I came in clutch with the save because I was just fucking fed up with the routine of everything. Yeah. Like last minute, kind of just sprung this and the idea, and I fell mm-hmm. on a three day weekend for me, luckily, and yeah, managed man. to squeeze out of the clutches of. Yeah. You know, How has schedule. that been treating you? Dude, like my my day off EMR, or what? Or no, the EMS life, man. Fuck, dude, it's. It's everything I wanted out of uh, this career change from waiting tables for so yeah. long and selling cars to this. Yeah. But dude, it's I learn something new every day. And yeah. like even if it's something small, it after a while it kinda gets exhausting, as awesome as it mm-hmm. is, you know? And uh, I just need a fucking break, man. Yeah, dude. I mean it's it's you know, it's it, it's just this is all one, short-term thinking. I'm not being a bitch and saying, "Man, I need to switch jobs no. already." Like, this is just me putting in some hours. I'm ready no, to fucking relax. Man. It's just honestly, that's just what kind of the job just does, man. It's it's a tough job. Sleep it's schedule very, is fucked. It's very difficult, man. You know, you, woke you up at four forty-five this morning, my dude, yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I was just like, "God damn it!" Yeah, like what the fuck? And I just thought, well, I might as well just get the pictures ready for the MMA podcast and yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, I could man. I could just be a jerk and just be like, you know, that's about when I get up every day. But yeah, you know, it's like too <laughs> shit. <laughs> but hey, I'm I'm also home at three o'clock, so that's a little different. So you you just uh, set a few hours ahead. Yeah. You wound up a little tighter than most folks. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, right. That's that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. But here's the thing, man. I just came off a of 24 in Smithville not too long ago, and that was. I mean, it was cool, man. It was the first, like, chill shift I ever had. Oh, okay. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people are like, fuck EMS, because they all they do is goddamn sleep in their car. I mean, at least where I'm stationed at, that is not true. This is the first shift I have not been completely and utterly foobarred with my sleep schedule. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty cool. Had a few 911s, had a few postings. Mm-hmm. Just got to talk to a pretty cool partner and just mm-hmm. kicked it. But um, but on the other token, too, man, I have some shit. That I, I, I've thought about it at least once a day since it happened. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, had a, a woman deglove her scalp. And, oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. And, I, I, you know, HIPAA and all that shit, I'm not going to fuck with that. But um, patient's fine. Yeah. Um, was intoxicated, so... Um, it actually kind of played into her favor. Yeah. And uh, she was about two minutes away from the trauma one center. So, I mean, if there was a place to fuck up and just completely change your life, that was a good you know spot, I guess, if you had to pick one. <laughs> yeah. Just it's a shame, man. It, what people have to go through. You really got to wonder what kind of drives people to just, I mean, you know that drinking and driving is bad. I'm guilty of it. I mean, yeah. fuck. I mean, I'm pretty much just confessional right now. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, I had my reasons to kind of just, you know, say it was, it was fine, but... Um, luckily nothing ever happened and I pulled my head out of my ass, but I mean, it's just to drive that intoxicated. It doesn't make sense to me. I never, you know, I never even fathomed getting that fucked up. Do I even need to bring up the night at Eddie's social? Oh my God. Shout out. Eddie's social. (laughs) Pool hall. San Antonio. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's not go. (laughs) It's not about, it's about the dumb bitch that that wrecked her car. Not me. No. Yeah. Right. So, but. Yeah, man, it just uh, it's kind of it, it sad. gets real real quick, you know. It, like it's yeah, it's sad seeing, you know, just <laughs> just not to take it back down to a, a really sad part, but it's just because I I twenty eighteen starting out dark, bro. Right, yeah, <laughs> but you know, I just it's just sad to see what stuff like alcohol does to somebody, just how destructive it is. I mean, not just alcohol, dude. I mean, like you have a lot of patients that are seekers, really addicted to meds, yeah. pills, like. And um, out in Bastrop, it's a pretty big, you know, area for heroin and shit out there. So, I mean, not, I mean, there's a really nice, you know, part of the, of the town, too. Yeah. When we get calls out, out there, it's pretty, much, it's pretty much just like chest pain or I fell and, yeah. you know, help me. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I saw a patient break their fucking humerus while falling in the shower. Mm-hmm. Fucking crazy. We got called back a few days later and uh, fingernails popping off and shit. And just, Ooh. it's brutal, man. And he's just like, hey, wh- why are you here? I was like, I don't know. Why'd yeah. you call? And it was actually his mom. And he was in pain. She freaked out. And he was, you know. Well, yeah, it just reminds me of when I was doing my training and oh, yeah, I got the, my EMT. You got the, you graduated with the fire academy. Yeah, I did. That was when I was, yeah, I tried to do that before That's I got to cool. doing what I was doing now, working for. 
the family business. We can get into that later. <laughs> um, if you want. Uh, yeah, just that was one of my clinicals that I did was out kind of in deliver that. deliver a baby? I watched a C-section. I, all you women out there, just know I, I, yeah. You and your fucking, yeah. yeah. It, it's no joke. It's no joke, man. But, um, yeah, it was, it was no joke. It was, it was crazy, but it was just, you know. I bet you in the moment you fucking, it was kind of like just watching a movie at that point. And uh, it was the only time I've ever actually legitimately had to look away from something. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. It legitimately was, it. I got a little woozy and I don't Dang. do that. I don't do that, man. It's it's just, it's the it's the angle. It's the angle oh, sure. that, I, that I had. Got to see down Glory's they, hole. They, well, not even that. They, they had her opened up. And I oh, could I bet you saw lower intestine. I, I, shit. I could, dude. It was the weirdest thing, and I saw, and I saw her uterus with the baby inside it, inside her still. It was the weird. It was crazy, dude. Like, and then they cut it and pulled it out. The like, how would the baby turn out? Was it any complications? He was, Perfect. Nah, he was fine, dude. Good. Yeah, he was fine. And That's always so scary, kind yeah, of like yeah. delay, having to deliver a baby on the road. I'm sure for for the for the woman. Oh my god. Yeah. I and can only imagine, dude. It was and and it was what just kept throwing me off so much is that they gave her a spinal tap, mm-hmm. which is they literally inject a needle into your spine. They were had cord. to be pulled over, huh? They were pulled over. How far out from the hospital were they? No, oh no 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 no! This was at that I watched that C section was in the hospital. Oh, it was in the ER. Yeah, this was at the ER. I thought you were in route. No, no, no! They don't they don't do C sections in a truck. Yeah, that's that's yeah. where I kind of like. Uh, no, pardon me. I, no, no. <laughs> eyebrow rose there for a second. I was like, wait a minute. No, Let no. Get to the bottom. Of no, this. that that was the other that other chick that other girl that we picked up. She was. I don't know what was going on, but. She was having her baby, and we just had to get her to the hospital as fast as possible. Oh, I got you. I, I, I mixed to. the two together. Yeah, yeah, no, but that no that that C section that was that was insane, man. Because they gave her that spinal tap, and that's where they actually deadened the nerves in the spinal cord, so that you can't you're literally like paraplegic from the like, from the waist down well, temporarily. Fuck, good on you though, still having yeah. a baby. And so it's Ooh, one. Could of, you imagine those fucking girls just like right after like nine months pregnant, turning butter for six hours just to fucking provide for the family, having your yeah, baby like right? just there on the ground, just yeah, just no medicine for like miles, and even then you couldn't afford it because you had a shit farm. And uh, dude, I I know it's just yeah, it they is. probably it, were it, still doing chores during their labor. Dude, I mean that's it, that's honestly like just what it made me think of when I saw that is I was like, okay, this is insane. Like we're seeing this happen. And back in the day, like there wasn't, that didn't happen. It was just, you rolled the dice. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, I mean, here's the thing. You know, like, honestly, I think that could be something that, you know, well, not in, I mean, it was just natural population control, really, I guess. I mean, just it being fucking painful. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, and being that intense of a fucking, yeah, it's no look, wonder I mean, people only live to be like I mean, it 30 makes sense, you know. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Jeez. Just the men having to deal with it and the women themselves having to go through it. Just yeah, like, dude. Ah! But still. I just, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, as true as that is, I would, I would rather deal with it, man. I would just rather deal with the, the, the ladies kind of, yeah. you know, what we consider bitching and moaning than uh, being like, yo, fuck you. Funnily, than actually dealing with it. Funnily enough, I, uh, was actually jokingly talking with my mom about this a couple weeks ago. Shout out, mom. Um, <laughs> Hello. <I> was, <laughs> we were just jokingly talking about how, like, how it is really truly conceivably possible that women like could take over, and like there's a future like where like, going to that. I, I'm curious. Just it was all joking and in fun, but I was just talking <laughs> about like just through their sheer means of, of womanly ways and being smarter than us and outwitting us just dumb men i can't remember what we were talking about but it led me to that and knocking on the head with a yeah like the, a hammer just, it led me to like this cave. futuristic like oh i think we were we were talking about wonder woman that's why oh, okay. so she came yeah and uh you know how 
where you know she came from the Amazonians so there's no no men they you know uh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. all fine and so we were just joking about that and I was like yeah I I, com- I totally see that like I could see women taking us over and just having men hooked up to like sperm machines like a yeah, like just a cow. Milk us yeah. we're just all sitting there just like <laughs> <laughs> just, fat as, sorry, just yeah. fat as fuck and just eating just being fed whatever yeah. the fuck we want and being milked like yeah, we just, just constantly <laughs> getting jacked off like I, I, I dude I, I mean I mean tell me like I mean that ask they can me, do it ask me my senior year in high school and I would have asked where to sign up yeah. like seriously that, that's how they get you dude that's how they would get us that's how they would start excuse just me start so you mean them. that I am just I'm trapped in my room, but I'm just constantly fed. Yeah. And you, you just... I can play you, video games and just stay here and do And nothing. pretty much whenever I want to, you know, finish, you can just come in and help me out with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> where's my where's my quill? Uh, this, <laughs> is, this took a... Yeah. This took dude, a... Dude, no. Turn. This That's is so funny. Just oh, accept it, dude. Yeah. This is... This yeah. is background noise. Just... Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey. But so. any whore. Um. All right, back on this wild goose chase here. This is organic as fuck. <laughs> but, yeah. So, what were we originally talking about? Your EMS schedule, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, before we fucking skyrocketed into something that's probably going to piss off every feminist in the country. Yeah. Oh, darn. Sorry, <laughs> but so. anyways, yeah, my sleep schedule is fucked, and you know it caused me to wake up at four forty-five this morning. But whatever, it's cool. I'm really stoked for this. Um, mm-hmm. Dude, did you watch Holly Holm versus Cyborg? I did not. I saw it after the fact. I didn't watch it live, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, Cyborg kind of took her apart, dude. But see, here's the thing. One, it's the first like. Cyborg's has just been for fucking just ending bitches' careers, you mm-hmm. know, like in the first or second round. Mm-hmm. And no one's really been able to take her into deep waters like that. Her cardio is never really in huge question, but she is carrying a lot of mass. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and but see, like, they created that 145 division for her. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where the thing is, too. I mean, Holly used to fight at 35. Mm-hmm. And it just fit her perfectly because she's a big girl too. Yeah. Um. She, she just doesn't look she's quite tall. How yeah. tall is she? I have no idea. That's a good question. Um. Oh, but uh, at, while you look that up, I'll I think kind she's of go like into right it. at six feet. It wouldn't surprise me, man. She she did stand taller than Cyborg, but and like she the first two rounds. Oh, she's only five eight. Um, but still, she's tall. She That's could, tall. She kicks like she's six foot tall. Yeah. She looks anyway, taller than that in the octagon, too. Yeah, she does. They, the, those camera people get really... I mean, they make 5'2 people look really tall. Yeah, that's true. They, they, they get make, those camera they angles. They make Mighty right. Mouse look like... Yeah. He's, <laughs> you know, 5'6". Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. But, no, but he fucking kicks I ass. Would, he, pound for pound, best fighter in the UFC. <sighs> if John Jones could just stay clean. If John Jones was... Yeah. If, if John he, Jones could just stay clean. If he didn't clean, get that, he he didn't did get that Chinese clean. creatine that was contaminated with steroids. It's, dude, I listened to uh, the Joe Rogan podcast <laughs> with uh, Jeff Nowitzki, the one of the head guys for USADA, mm-hmm. and he went down to a T of just exactly what they do. And he, even if it was a unknowingly tainted supplement, he um, would be held accountable still. Wouldn't get the max punishment, which is now like eight years. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, they prep them and they tell the fighters, here's what you need to expect before a mm-hmm. fight. You're held accountable for your actions. Mm-hmm. If you take supplements, it's your responsibility to make sure that they're a third party um, examined and shit like that. Yeah. And uh, even if it's from like a gas station dick pill, that's considered like... You know, you're not knowing your shit. Mm-hmm. So you get at least the minimum of four years in John Jones, uh, you know, situation. And if people don't know what we're talking about, I'm sorry. Just tune into my uh, MMA podcast, Baby Brother Beatdown Breakdown. It's going to be the third podcast in the series. Advertisement over. <laughs> so, yeah, I do. But anyways, uh, Holly would get these underhooks um, whenever Cyborg would come in for a combo and get her up against the cage. And she was very successful in that in the first round. Mm-hmm. And she kind of pieced together some good combos and um, went tit for tat with her and she won the first round. Second round towards the end, I believe Cyborg had a nice little flurry, kind of hit her mm-hmm. in the face pretty good once. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll see that a lot of swelling in the left cheek if you look at some yeah. pictures. Yeah. Kind of muffed, made her look like a potato, dude. Yeah. It was rough. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I still think Holly took the second round. Third round was up in the air. They, mm-hmm. Holly did her thing. 
put a couple combos together. Cyborg started connecting. She started yeah. playing her range. Yeah, and it looked like it looked like she kind of started like figuring her out. Like, yeah, uh, dude, she she was getting frustrated with them underhooks and yeah. being forced up against the cage for so long. Mm-hmm. But um, she came back and um, she she utilized her jab a lot. A lot of people think she comes out like a brute or just a mongoloid just because of her build. And, yeah, uh, you know she's 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 a handsome woman. Yeah, um, but yeah. Uh, she uh, she can piece together some combos and she's a really she, good striker. Yeah, she can, man. She she's starting to get behind that those, jab more. And, those, and, yeah, that was gonna say that's what I really noticed is, and and uh, you know you had you had kind of mentioned that to me before also how she was she was countering Holmes combos like Holly started just throwing these just rudimentary combos at her and yeah and, and she's she, got kind of desperate after getting yeah. lapsed so many times it felt yeah and then it just became like you could just you could see it like she 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 blocked every single kick yeah in the fourth round if I'm not mistaken yeah. if that's she, wrong I'm sorry she smelled whatever. blood dude she you could tell like oh yeah she, and, and then um, and then it was just pretty much over she ran away with it after yeah. that she ran away, speaking, but anyways, really good speaking fight. Speaking of that, you were saying about blocking that kick. I, there was a, I don't know if I'd have to look it up. I saw. Did you? There was a. I saw a video on YouTube of a guy chopping down a banana tree with his. Oh shoes. yeah, they, yeah. He uh, he's a really famous Muay Thai fighter. I don't, I forgot his name, but yeah, he's like what. what? 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 Just like fucking chopping down this banana tree, dude. That's the thing when you when you train in Muay Thai, you you utilize your elbows and your knees much more than anything else, and they come yeah. right into range. You don't see a lot of bobbing and weaving like you do in boxing or, or even kickboxing and stuff like yeah. that. It's just very toe to toe, and and these guys will kick these you know sandbags and these hard objects like tires and mm-hmm. shit for years and years they build a callus over their shin and it becomes a lethal weapon dude yeah like it's insane that, i mean example the guy chopping down the banana tree with right. his fucking shin just and you build that calcification up over just years and years that's it's insane man but yeah, uh, uh who, yeah who dude. do you think uses muay thai the best in the ufc right now oh fucking i mean the one that's gotten me the most interest right now is actually because uh, I just watched a video of him uh, recently is Cain Velasquez. Okay. I'm not saying he's the best Muay Thai in the UFC. I'm just saying as of lately, he's the most entertained. It's what's been kind of tickling my fancy lately. Yeah. And yeah. Um, this this came. Oh my god, he's he's out right now with a back injury. He's in recovery still and stuff like that. But he's arguably uh, the best heavyweight uh, in the UFC. You know. Yeah. In, in UFC history. Yeah. I mean, that's arguable, yeah. yeah. But still, um, he just has this crazy stamina for a guy his mm-hmm. size, and especially mm-hmm. being training out there uh, in a very high altitude. He lives there, and, and on top of that, you know, he he kind of has a natural gift for cardio. I feel like a small piece of it, and mm-hmm. he's a really really hard worker too. Just yeah, just a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, like yeah, I, he just he doesn't gas. He doesn't Not at all. And, and dude, he swallows and drowns these heavyweights yeah. and just his cardio ability. Yeah. And he'll fucking um he'll come in and just charge him, and he lays in elbows. And he you, I have, I don't think I've seen a, a heavyweight throw a a spinning uh round kick mm-hmm. or like you know what some people will call like a crane kick or some mm-hmm. shit. I don't know all the different disciplines, you know, just, just check it out. I forget which fight it was, but he just fucking, he doesn't look like a heavyweight, but he, he kind of does, but he doesn't move like one. Yeah. World-class wrestling too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just insane group over there. Oh man. Really, really excited for, um, Stephen Ngannou. But anyways, I'm not going to make this an MMA yeah, podcast. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, we this, can move on from there. Uh, I don't know if you want to do, go this route. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited for Sunday. Oh yeah, dude. We um for those of you that care or just didn't know, um we've really had a good opportunity to try a lot of different things that we've never ever thought we'd ever get into before. I at least I didn't for sure. Yeah. And uh, that's actually Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, that's right. Dungeons and Dragons. We are... we say it like we're lifting our kilts. Like, don't look at yeah. Me. No, we, no, yeah. it's it's fun as we, fuck. It. It, it really is and and everyone's first reaction when they hear it is always just like that's even real just <laughs> nerd you know and it's but 
I and then they go and they play their Frenchman's foot. And, and what's so funny is they, they say that and like, oh, that's such a dorky, nerdy game. And then they go and play their RPG video game. Oh, yeah. And it's they like don't this, even understand. It's, it's the same exact thing as like Skyrim, just with dice rolls. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what's so great about it is that we've been playing it now for a little bit over a year. Year and a half, I'd say. Year and a half. Yeah, probably. We've but, been there since the dawn of our time. <laughs> but, a small group. But. Uh, yeah, we we just so here's the premise of it. Basically, like if you, you have a dungeon master who creates this story, or at least this background and imagery to kind of paint paint a story for the characters, and then however many people you have in your group, they build their own character. They choose a class, whether they want to be more magic or just more, you know, tanky, you know, if you will, and then kind of like a mix of in between. So everyone has their characters, and then you're just dropped into this story. And basically, as if you have a good storyteller for a DM, you can do literally anything. Yeah, and it's that's that's one of the things that's gotten me so so really into it and enjoying it and and researching stuff about it is that it really is an endless possibility game. It's something. It's a I, I like to classify it as I mean, it's a role playing party game. You know, mm-hmm. it it you. The more you get into it, and the more you Buy act into up, it. and the more that you play your character, yeah, the more that you play your character, you know, it's it's something that you can do for a very long time. Oh no doubt. The original build of the game is designed to take you know five years of one game a week. You know, that's mm. about how long some it people takes. Are, are lucky enough to play more, uh, more times a week. But it's yeah. it's some hard work, because especially with our group, we have two people in two different states. We got uh, was it Arkansas or Alabama? Where where's uh, uh Justin? No, 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 no. no names. Oh, oh anyways, man. sorry, Justin. <laughs> uh, he lives in Oklahoma, I think. No, I thought it was one of the either Alabama or Arkansas. I don't remember. Uh, anyways, yeah. and then we have um, you know, our other buddy in, in Florida. Yep. And then everyone else is in Texas, but still different cities in Texas. So we're mm-hmm. Skyping um, yeah. when we play these games. So it takes dedication. Like, yeah, and, and, and it's always better when you get uh, when you get in front of each other, obviously. You know, over Skype, it's a little difficult. But we've made it, do, we've made it work. And it's and been fun. It's been it's fun been as fuck. It's been incredibly fun. Just some of the stories that we have from it already. And, and it's so funny because it didn't happen. At all? No, yeah, seriously. It didn't. In happen the grand spectrum anywhere. of everything, what really happened? We just sat at a table it, and it, cut it, up. It happened because our friend sitting at the table next to us said that I did it, and therefore it, it happened. And therefore it he happened. Plays God so for four it, hours. It, it really is. It's. <laughs> I mean, you create your own little universe, and you, the world is truly your oyster. You can yeah. go and do whatever you want. We started and, off on that the, that prison cell in the yeah, pirate ship, right? The pirate we had ship. to break our yeah. way up to the top, fight mm-hmm. the boss, and escape. Mm-hmm. And that's how we came into this world. And now we're not going to go into what happened this last time. But basically, this group that we've spent you know a year and a half you know building with different characters oh, and shit it like went that, down. it just everyone everything the, the fell apart. Shit, <laughs> I don't I don't think so, dude. It happened to basically. We were all on one team, and then in an instant, the party was completely split apart, and yeah. um, now everyone's on... Some people are on one team, and some people are on another team, and there's a giant war about to yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's just been, it's been fucking cool. And eventually on this podcast, so whether it be our actual campaign or if it's me doing a one-shot whenever some people are short, I, I do want to... Um, once this will be a video podcast, I'm, I'm going to make out an episode where we uh, just play our one shot and uh, we'll mic up and all that shit, get, get a couple of good camera angles yeah. and we'll fucking, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have at it, man. I think that would be really fun. I and think... if it's successful, we'll see what it, what the listeners are yeah. feeling about it and all that shit. You know, fuck them. We'll do it either way. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I mean. If you don't like this shit, you, you just change the channel or wait till next week. Yeah. I mean, it is truly, it's one awesome. of those. It's one of those games that everyone would enjoy. They just don't know it. You just got to be able to listen to a story and be willing to just listen to some dialogue. Yeah, you have to put your ego aside and just act like an idiot and have fun with your friends. Like, yeah. you know, you got to use your stupid voice and, you know, be you know <laughs> do all your stupid and just get into it. Because yeah, it, it makes it, it more fun. Dude. It does. It really does. And it, it adds an element to it that you just it makes it more real. 
Oh yeah, but dude. it leaves it lets you. Uh, for me, it what I was getting into earlier is it lets it let me start using my imagination again in a way that I did when I was a little kid. You know, give like, me an excuse just to let go for a bit. Yeah, and you know, it was something. It was kind of sad, man, because when we were first doing it, and I started, you know, really like opening up and like just using my imagination again, I was like, "Ooh, man, I forgot how to do this." You know, Hello, it's like darkness, my old friend. Yeah, yeah you know, dude. it's like you know, when you're a little kid, you can take a little army figure that doesn't move at all, and yet he Create has an entire universe. backstory. You oh, know, yeah. his whole family and. You're playing and he's doing whatever and you know it and and you live your alternate life without telling anyone shit. Yeah, yeah. it's cool, yeah, man. man. You think of, and uh, it's it's been awesome too because it 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 uh, kind of uh, helped me get to talking to some people that I never thought I ever really talked to. Like mm-hmm. uh, one of the guys in our group uh, mm-hmm. I met uh, on the job, and mm-hmm. uh, we just randomly one day just started talking about. Uh, uh, fucking D and D just so mm-hmm. happened I just fucking went for it, oh, and uh, and then he's been a real asset. He's been fun, man. He's been yeah. real cool. He's a cool guy. I'll, uh, I'll probably get him on here at some point and, if he's down. And you know, like again, like my example of the uh, my apartment there installing some uh, new I can't remember what it was some internet that I don't use into my probably a you know webcam to watch me make sure that you know, <laughs> whatever. But uh, yeah, they were installing it and. Uh, I got home from work and and the workers were there and the guy asked me he's like hey man do you mind if we just do yours real quick we just want to get a jump on tomorrow I was like yeah whatever and uh, he came in and we were talking a little bit he's a little bit older than us probably in his 30s yeah but he looked down on my table and he saw my D20 sitting there and my 20 sided die oh no shit and he just froze in his tracks and I was like what's going on and he goes is that a Dungeons and Dragons dice and I went yeah, and he just like dropped all of his stuff and was just like, no way. I haven't seen any of those dice since I was like 16. He's talking about how like his friends had a campaign that ran from when they were like just eight a PTSD to, like, of awesomeness. Like they had a six year campaign that they ran from like eight to 14. Oh, and shit. yeah, and it was him and his brother and then like three or four of their other rookies. friends. It's like straight, like, you know. Yeah, straight out of Stranger Things or something, you know, like fighting the Demogorgon. But, you know, it, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, he, he just, we ended up talking about it for like an hour. And oh, no we, shit. We were just talking about everything. He's like, dude, he, I'm getting paid to talk about D&D. Right. He, he, uh, he, he, ba- he played back when it was first edition, when there was only, I think, three or four classes. <laughs> and we're playing fifth edition with homebrew out the wazoo and turning this game into just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like, I mean, what like, seems super OP at such a low level is just like yeah. the smallest, you know, yeah. and, and piece it, of yeah. what we're really going to be getting now. So it's going to be crazy. It'd be interesting if it makes a big comeback because, you know, it was, I think it was I created think, I mean, in 77 or something like really? that, 77, 78. But, you know, how everything is all cyclical and everything comes we'll find back. Out. Yeah. Probably the more and more people advertise this shit on TV and like do like a, not TV, I mean like YouTube channels and stuff yeah. like that. It, it might have a little comeback. We'll see. Either way, we'll have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's always just, it's a good way to keep in touch with your friends, especially Dude. if you're long distance. I want to shoot some shit when we go to the ranch. Oh yeah, we will. Oh yeah, we will. Dude, can you? Can you like tell me about the gun that you got? Is that cool? Oh yeah, I mean it'd it'd be better if I ran and grabbed it real quick. Dude, go ahead. Yeah, Bear with me, dude. That's fucking sick. Yeah, man, this is a brand new Christmas gift that I got. Yeah, this here is a Bond Arms Special Edition. Um pistol it is called an old glory it is an absolutely beautiful beautiful handgun um it has engraving on the side and they and they etched a uh american flag onto the side and the stock has an american flag on it and as it well. has like that really busy you know what kind of most guys are drawn to that matte yeah, silver with that, that tungsten metallic yeah and silver and, with the and american it, flag engraving <laughs> Dude, that's fucking sick, it, man. So, it's beautiful. So, what, what, uh, I noticed you have two heads for that. What, uh, yeah, what does it shoot? So, this, this thing actually has 
I can't remember, I can't tell you the exact number, but it's like, I think, 24 different barrels that you can buy for this gun. Oh, fuck. It is designed to be easily... Fucking who the god... Who's emailing me? It's it's designed... <laughs> it's designed to be taken apart easy. You see, there's just a pin right here, mm -hmm. and this whole thing just pops off. It's like two and a quarter turn or something like that, and it can't, comes out. So, like, what's the firepower of that thing? Like, kind of going... Oh, man, this thing's pretty scary. Um, so, the two barrels that I have are... <laughs> I have the 357 the Magnum barrel, which gives you two options. It allows you to shoot a 357 round. Um, certain types of 38 rounds will fit in this as well. Um, but the scary thing is you can put a 410 shell in here, a shotgun round in it. Oh, um, dude. Okay, so what, what are we going to shoot with that? Like what? A... This, really, this gun, I what mean... What are you going to shoot with? that's just the thing this gun is one of those that it's not necessarily practical for a hunting standpoint yeah just because you only have two shots um if you're good you shouldn't need more than that but mm. <laughs> no but it's just it, it's more really designed for self-defense that would i would imagine that would just fucking put a hole in someone's chest oh. the size of oh, you could throw a football through someone's chest oh, my oh God. yeah um just to put it in perspective if you get a uh double lot um uh, 410 round i believe that there are eight uh projectiles in the shell and Jesus. and each one of the projectiles is Roughly the same size as the bullet of a uh, 357. You've got to shoot that once when we go out tonight, or yeah, tonight. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't see why not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you Just know, fucking takes off this, your shoulder. You know, this thing's gonna the 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 spread's gonna be crazy because look, I mean, this thing's a two and a half inch barrel. So you know, yeah. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be effective for. Really, for that, which is possibly what I will intend on doing once I get my uh, concealed handguns license. Uh, That's fucking scary, dude. Walking, oh, you dude. walking around with, with that shit, yeah, man. Yeah, I just like with ah. this thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, thing. That's that's what I would call it, man. Is it's the, the this is the gun where where would you take it out? Like where when like when when would you uh, have your gun on you whenever you get your concealed handguns? Like like all the time, or are you thinking? No, I would, I would, I would have one at work. At, at the business mm -hmm. because you know just for protection um there have been a couple of things you know it's not on the best side of town but you know it's uh you know just for personal protection it would be you know more so that's a just, lot of protection uh, i mean you know that's that's just the thing man that's insane Is, though it's a cool one the I, I cannot remember what the average number of shots per um self-defense engagement is but i think it's only like two or three which in the grand scheme of things it's just it's not enough really i mean for people if you're talking a distance from you know five to ten feet which is where most of these occur it's within five to ten feet so i mean not much farther away from where you and i are right now mm -hmm. so you're not going to be able to waste time you're not going to be able to take an accurate shot you're not going to be able to you know do all of these things that's what that's what is so so scary about situations like that is because it's not it's not easy to do and nobody ever wants to do it but if you have to this was this some is, crazy fucks out there yeah yeah i mean i mean i mean i'm talking about from the self-defense standpoint that's a, that's yeah a, that's a whole you're, you're making an argument for people that are just utterly hating this right now yeah well, right. i got you yeah I, that's understandable but you know the the only time you know the the thing about this would be um the thing with this would be it would be something that i would have the only time that it would ever be seen by anyone in, <laughs> would be if my life was truly in danger and that's and that's that's the hope. And it's always you, the hope. Yeah, and when you get and when you get that license, that's part of it. You are signing literally a document that says, "I take full responsibility for the things that could happen to me if this gun that I've gotten registered comes out of my pocket." 
And that's just the thing, man. It just everyone has to be held accountable. Yeah. I'm not really sure if there's any barely any, even any questionable, you know, mm-hmm. stance. I just know, especially with the the tragedy, uh, the tragedy that happened in you know north of San Antonio, um, the shooting at the church. Yeah, uh, it was a, made national news, and uh, you know, ev- everyone's making their argument. You know, on one side saying, oh, you know, if we had more gun laws. You know, we banned uh, guns. You know, this never would have happened. But mm-hmm. at the same token, too, some of the you know cities with the most gun laws, like Chicago, are you know allegedly going through like a war zone right now. Mm-hmm. And then have you t- seen video of, of Chicago at night? Oh yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's just it too. I'm there's there's arguments on both sides because even then too, they got the person that stopped the the you know the the person shooting up this church uh, was a concealed handgun instructor. And yep. ironically, you yep. know, so everyone. I mean, it's just the government's plan to get everyone just fighting once more. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the government. No, I mean it's. Yeah, I mean, it's Who? funny. It's funny that that comes up too because, you know, God forbid that it didn't happen, and it's terrible that it did happen there. But that 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 happens in my church. It's not just one dude with the oh, gun. Oh no, this <laughs> like dude, even the priest that, that dude points his make, you know fucking revolver straight. Our old his... one used to. I'm not even oh joking. Our old one used to. Um, but no, Talk dude, I mean, that guy would him. make the worst last mistake of his life. Turn into hamburger meat. He would, he would come in and he'd look and he'd have those like 18 to 30 dudes stand up and all start pulling their guns out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, sorry. That's, I mean, like, yeah, get this yeah. table. Like yeah. I'm telling you, you, flick this thing and you can it's hear like, like a ring. It's like, like a crazy. percussion instrument. Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> but yeah, man. So this is, this is that beauty and we're going to. Take it out and test it. Oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real. I fun. can't wait to ride the ATVs, man. Uh, I know. I just don't want to fucking like pop another tire. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and I'll just be careful. I was I think we have was a whole extra set out there. So oh, okay, it's cool. So I'm gonna just fucking just go straight in the cacti. <laughs> oh yeah, my dad totally. Yeah, we don't we don't even care about it anymore. Just, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I think Dude, he's got some special tires. So. I um, fucking. What do you think? If okay, random scenario. Let's just say internet dies out, you know, right now. Thank God. This very right. <laughs> so okay, cool. Next, next subject. No. Oh, it yes. Was, I, first, honestly, first thing I would do is just, and I'm assuming phone calls, you know, mm-hmm. too, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I'd say we probably either go to the ranch like mm-hmm. this instant. Oh yeah. Or I'd go straight back to. Oh fuck! I don't even know. There's no. The, I mean that's. I mean, yeah, that's just part go of somewhere the, where you can. Oh, dude, part, you'd have food for yeah the first thirty um, days at least. Oh, dude, that, before it's making some, like, before making your first movement outside. That though. that's the thing. That's you know what. Isn't that the goal? Though, here we go again. Property? Here's what you know: proper hunting practices and killing animals and eating their delicious flesh. Um, oh, Jesus. You know, gets into because you looked at me like you wanted to kill something <laughs> just now. I do, but I'm gonna scoot back a second. Um, but uh, ideally, it, in a perfect world, you would want if you if you do decide to eat meat, because there's a lot of people. Whether I agree with it or not, there's a fuck ton of people to have in their hearts and minds truly logical reasons for being vegetarian or vegan. For me personally, I'm not. But uh, in a perfect world for me, I would definitely love for the meat that I eat to be hunted on my property exactly and knowing exactly how long of a life it's had always be fed never have to worry about natural predators and 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 just whenever they kind of hit that age yeah where you know they've lived a good life and shit like that you know hey i'm it's time i'm on the higher end of the food chain i'm sorry dude right. i hope you had a good life but i'm gonna eat you real quick the uh i want to grow a garden too the, you know? the argument that i always make with it is you know, especially especially you know, with people with, who are against hunting and whatnot, they just don't understand. I mean, I, I don't blame them though, because I mean, whenever you picture like death of animals, what's the first thing most people think of? Like the fucking slaughterhouses that are around, just right, mistreating exactly. the animals they, and just yeah, exactly. It's and they brutal. don't understand that the complete and utter like total just disrespect difference. of a species, really. Right, and you know, it it really yeah, it really is, and you know, I'm such if a you, hypocrite. If you are cause a, if you are a that shit. Yeah, if you're a responsible hunter and you are a skilled hunter, you are going to give the animal 
a faster, cleaner, and quicker and, and much more humane death than it would ever get out in the wild. Otherwise, yeah. Think about it. Get eaten watch by a mountain pla- lion yeah. or just starved. Fuck no. Nah. Watch Planet Earth no, for like. I would definitely take a bullet. To wa- the heart. Watch Planet Earth for like five minutes. <laughs> and the small you, animal is get, always in a constant search for food. Constant gets eaten by the rattlesnake yeah. and shit out. Yeah. And and uh, in the they, in the scene, they, <laughs> they you know they're really their best case scenario for how their life is going to end is getting completely mauled to death by some other creature. Yeah. Their food possibly running out, or they get sick car. and just die, or get hit by a car. Even worse. Yeah, but you see, know, that's just it, it. That's where the practice of hunting. You need to, you know, mm-hmm. you need to have a respect for animals to not to obviously not try to clip it. Right. You need to put in the time to at least give these animals a clean death, and that's the I, that's the beauty of it, and all, that's also the tragedy in it too. Mm-hmm. But it's it's dude, it's a fucked up cycle, but it's beautiful. Yeah. And, and then you you sustain life and feed your family with the meat, you know, that you just you know killed and. That's ideal for me. Yeah. That's why I'm okay with hunting, and that's why I'm still okay with yeah. eating meat. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, dude, I mean... I think I think people are just kind of... We're in a sensitive time period where a lot of people well, are picking teams, and there's lots of extremes on either side. Yeah. And it just... Um, well, I think that... that there, people are very passionate, too, about their opinions. Yeah, and there might... And there, some of it might be something along the lines of, like, maybe they're scared that we're going to not do it the right way and kill everything off like we did the buffalo and whatnot but you know we didn't have a knowledge of it back then buffalo or back and more numerous like very very doing very well and uh and 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 that's and that's just what it is is i just think that yes obviously there's irresponsible hunters out there yes obviously there's things that aren't pretty but they are there are necessary you talk to any landowner out there who has a feral hog problem, it is absolutely awful what these animals do. They destroy property. They destroy fence lines. They kill other animals. They destroy... I mean, they, they populate like crazy, too. They drop, I believe it's two litters a year, up to tw- like 20 babies and they're on sustainable land too exactly and exactly so they're getting you know these guys are trying to throw corn to get for their for their livestock and deer and everything and and, none of them's getting fed because the hogs and these hogs have just completely come in and just become a real issue and these things are mean and they oh no doubt they have huge tusks and they hurt man and they're they're evil they're evil creatures Start off as a as a barn pig, and it, did yeah. you know that those they're the same exact creature as the barn pig that you'll see like the pink ones with mm-hmm. no fur or tusks, mm-hmm. and they they change so rapidly mm-hmm. they will actually grow those tusks and grow all that dark thick coarse fur within a matter of months. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. They uh, they're very smart, very smart animals. They're That's very... the thing too. That's so mm-hmm. tragic and sad about it too. Like, I've seen piglets and pigs trained like dogs, and they just drew the short straw in that one. Yeah. It could very easily be the other way around, where we have pet pigs all over the place, and then our pups are, you know, the new bacon. It's, oh, that would be so weird. That's dude, an alternate universe theory right I mean, there. That's a, uh, <laughs> that's a Rick and Morty. It'd be fucked, though. It's a Rick and it Morty just, Oh, man. Around. I don't even want to think about it anymore. No, yeah. <laughs> Theo Bacon. Uh, no. no. <laughs> I love him so much, dude. <laughs> He'd be the best tasting bacon. He you see would. how fucking meaty his chops bacon. are? Good boy bacon. I'm not going to eat my dog, everyone. It's a joke. <laughs> I will say that we definitely um, started off on a very conservative note, but just, I mean, it's, it's just going to go there at times. You yeah. know, like everyone's just got to know that I, I definitely have uh, some conservative views on some things, and I do have some liberal views on some things. Like, it's weird, man. We don't really pick sides. And if you do, that's, that's, that's fine. Just, you know, just. Speak your piece and at least be willing to listen to my side too. Well, the thing, yeah, the thing about it is, you can have your side. That's fine, but you have to be able, you have to be mature enough to be able to look at the other argument and at least under try to find reasons and, and understand why the other party, yeah. the other team, if you will, air quotes, um, just sees the world from their perspective. Yeah. You know, and that's what's really caused me to have a conflict of interest on my own beliefs and stuff. You know, shit like that and. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I guess the word would be libertarian is what I am, but I, I definitely do sway, you know, conservative on some viewpoints, and then uh, 
very liberal on others. And um, I can, I don't know, there just doesn't really seem to be a, a halfway point with this. We're too far, you know, it, and you're too in deep right now for there to be any positive change without there being big consequence somewhere. Yeah, it's just the uh, the way the system is going right now. There's just there's, it's very there's manipulated so much that would by have, business. Yeah, and there's so much that would have to be done. It, it's it just, there's it, it's there's too a lot to ask of one person. The chip holders truly do have it. You know, they have a lot of the money, and they, you know, a lot of those big names. You know, like Soros and you know. All that stuff when it, the first names that kind of pop into my <laughs> my head yeah. um, with all that, but it just when you have that kind of power, it re, you can really the manipulate. evil vampires. <laughs> <laughs> the evil vampires of molesting yeah. your children. Yeah, the, yeah. Fucking. <laughs> but now. Alex Jones, everybody. Yeah. But no, dude. There's there's you know we we've talked about this a number of times before. I know that people. It seems like just people just wait for their turn to speak, mm-hmm. and though that that is you want to talk about something, a way that to that's get been real a real change. inhibitor. Inhibitor. Yeah. yeah, you know, you want to talk about a way to get real change, see some real differences start happening. People have to start actually having dialogue. You can't just be just mindlessly screaming catchphrases at one another, and. That's that's just what I hear, and it's just what it seems like all the time. And Even in our media and shit like that, yeah. it's just um, the place where we used to know and trust, where we get all of our sources of information, where we still kind of get all of our information. Yeah, I the mean, most, to some most extent, of the, to most of the public. Yeah, yeah. and um, when that's being manipulated, you had a lot of people not knowing who to trust, so they just pick sides and just you know just gung ho, just or, that way. Fuck or everybody. Or even else. worse, they just. Go with the crowd, you know. They just the sheep. They just become a mindless follower, and it just. And when we say mindless follower, we just kind of mean like the grand, the the grand machine of things, you know. The whole, I mean, and if this is what you truly are comfortable with, like we, there's nothing wrong with that. If the, if that's your comfort zone, and you truly feel like you find purpose in this, and you wake up, you know, every day satisfied with your life, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but just from our perspective, we're kind of built and put on this earth at this point just to kind of fall into the system, work, contribute our, uh, portion to society Mm -hmm. and, um, and then just kind of white picket fence bullshit and die. That's Mm -hmm. what it's been for quite some time. And I feel like a lot of people now more so than ever starting to wake up and it's causing a lot of conflict. Our, our, our entire generation was told that. We could be anything and that we could do anything we wanted and that it was all going to be okay and that life was easy and that it wasn't going to be difficult. And then we fucking, some of us turned 18 and learned that that was different once they got, got punched on their in own the dick and got the and got life came up and said, hey, this is how it actually goes. Remember the Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, unless you're an engineer, you really don't need that anymore. No, you exactly. had to learn it and you had to know it. But, and you know, I am thankful for high school for social skills and to be able to kind of understand, just understand uh, kind of where I wanted to stand as morally, really. And I, that's pretty much everything I took away from from high school curriculum experience. But everything else, I mean, realistically, just as far as problem solving goes, yeah, not not too much. Some things, yes, like maybe some math here and there, some basic math that I'll, I'll always kind of need mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah. I, I don't need to, you know, recite fucking the way cells develop and yeah. how they're formed unless I plan on being a bio I look, I look at stuff like that now just for fun to get away from the, the dumb, you know, everyday work stuff. It's like, getting to that point, know. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. You know, I'd look at, you know, especially with my, my background with fitness and everything too, but my looking at like just the, how your body works and everything is, it's always, it's always cool. So... Yeah, dude, it makes you kind of wake up. Like, again, the Joe Rogan podcast I was listening mm-hmm. to. Um, let me, I, I have to get her name real quick. But she basically, there's this uh, Netflix movie called What the Health, mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, vegetarians and Dr. a lot of people. Doctor Rhonda Patrick, was it her? Uh, ooh, I let me, let me just find out real quick. Let me just 
skip the bullshit. But anyways, she basically spent years. It's a uh, Nina. Oh, oh. shit. Uh, T teacher. Oh, I'm gonna, okay. Nina T E I C H O L Z. I'm sorry. Can I, can I look at it one more time? Yeah, go ahead and look at. Sorry, I pronounced that. I'm so sorry. But anyways, she's a like a nutrition scientist, and uh, she yeah, used to be no vegetarian, idea. and uh, she now eats meat again and stuff like that. And she basically was talking about how she used to live and die by like documentaries, like What the Health, and how a lot of vegetarians and even vegans are just you know living by a lot of the scientific facts that they're bringing up on the show. She's debunking a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And ba- like, like for instance, I'm not gonna go into too crazy, um, go off on a crazy, you know, tangent. But she basically was saying how, pretty much sugar is is more of an inhibitor. Uh, I'm, I'm truly trying to be delicate about this, not fuck it up, but more of an inhibitor of heart and uh, cardio problems. Yes. Um, than saturated fats yes. and uh, and meat and red yes. meats Dude. and. White sugar is literally the worst thing that you can put in your body. The way that I was told is that your body reacts this, it, that uh, white sugar activates the same neural pathways and the same bodily responses and functions as cocaine. It, it, dude, that's fucking proof as to fucking why everyone's so goddamn addicted to it. I, right. I'm guilty of it. Right. I get my cravings. I'm actually doing pretty good about laying off the sugar as of... You know, about a week ago. Yeah. But um, but there's all that hidden sugar you have to look out for, yeah, too. Yeah. That's just the thing. That's harder to that's harder to get away from than all that saturated bread. fats. All that bread. Oh, yeah. I love pasta. That, but see, that's just the thing, too. With, with me running so much uh, now more, mm-hmm. I mean, I never used to run. Now I run quite frequently. And um, I'm just, my diet hasn't changed. So, I mean, I've made, I made, I'm making jumps cardio-wise. Pasta's okay, by the way. It doesn't have sugar. Most of it. I oh, mean, I'm just I, talking I know, about the extra some, carbs. Ah, carbs are okay. I mean, I could always use it because I'm burning so many calories during yeah. these runs. I ran six miles yesterday. Yeah, you need some fast carbs. But yeah. You need some quick, um, rice. quick digesting. You need some sweet potatoes and avocados. Some, uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, before I get into my fucking diet, she's basically saying how you need saturated fats yeah. and you do need uh, unsaturated fats. Mm-hmm. Um, because the... Uh, Saturated fats actually go into your body and saturate themselves with your body fat, and then you excrete them through your urine. And she was kind of also talking about how, like, she want she started being a vegetarian because she wanted to be healthy. She wanted to be mm-hmm. fit, but she found herself being twenty five pounds overweight because why? She, the thing about being a vegetarian, you have to be very good about your intake of protein. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people can say, "Hey, look, this cup of like spinach." Is the same amount as a chicken breast, mm-hmm. but your body doesn't process, you know, um, proteins out of the way the same way out of vegetables as it does meats. It's mm-hmm. a lot easier to obtain the protein through meats. So you have mm-hmm. to, like what seems like a cup of broccoli to match a burger. You really have to have like two or three cups of broccoli to, to for your body to actually absorb the same amount of protein as you would in a steak. Yeah. Um. And it's, and it's they're the, not realizing uh, that. And it's they're, the structure. It's the like the the molecular structure of the protein itself is different in plants and animals. And, and and here's the thing too, um, fuck I, I forgot what I was gonna say, <laughs> fuck it was it was going the same thing. Oh, your body cannot um, process its own. You can't uh, sustain energy off your fats at that point because you right. have to become for energy. You have to become more uh, dependent on carbs, beans, yeah, uh, potatoes, yeah, and real starchy things. Yeah. And so your body, you rely more on glucose than yeah. you actually do fat. And you, that's why you'll see these vegetarians, you know, have some extra weight on them because they're not maybe not exercising, mm-hmm. maybe have a good diet but not exercising. So they're gaining, they're eating all these carbs and, and getting some extra calories in mm-hmm. without even fucking realizing it. And uh, they're fucking. The crazy thing is when you see you know fat on someone, it, that's that's energy. Mm-hmm. Like literally, your body. If you're if you don't go far enough to where you can't return, if your body can, if you're able to make it a. Uh, find energy on the fat again you can lose a lot of weight and not mm-hmm. you can fast that's why you know people who can who know find out and see how their body works out and you can process fats yeah. as a source of energy fasting really works yeah you you, you know but yeah. eat you don't don't fucking starve yourself right but. right it's a uh i've seen multiple different ones i've seen the 
14 hour fast. I've seen a 16 hour fast. I'm trying to I'm trying to stop eating 14 hours. Uh, 14 hours. That, that's that, so, stop eating at eight. That's pretty normal. The only I time mean, it when sucks you really think is, about is it, when that's... you get home at like midnight or one o'clock. Yeah. You know, and it's just like yeah. fuck. I haven't eaten since eight. Yeah. I've been active since then. I'm hungry. So I fucking you know I'm at I'm not at a point you know before I'm I'm running a marathon um you know before I have to start dieting because I am not running this fucking marathon. At 210 pounds. Fuck no. Yeah. My joints would explode. Yeah. And, and probably get hurt training before then. So right. um, I'm, I plan on running this thing in, in October. And uh, I, I'm about, I'm stuck between 205 and 210. Mm-hmm. It's kind of my fluctuating zone. I'm not really giving a fuck about my diet right now, but I'm running a fuck ton. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to start dieting probably four, four months out. So okay. I could just like just have a healthy diet Mm -hmm. um, completely and just melt off some of the fat without changing anything, without exerting too much energy Mm -hmm. and risk hurting myself. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, just... Honestly, I would do a lot of research because I'm sure you can look up a lot of tips and stuff that would help you, like how to prep your body. Yeah, I I have. um, Basically right now, especially so far out, I'm I'm keeping a high caloric intake. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm gonna be burning extra calories anyway, and I, there are periods at work where I can't eat very often, so I'm just kind of like saying fuck it. And it does include some sugars, like yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I'll switch between a PB and H, peanut butter and honey, and a PB and J. Yeah, you know, it's it's so funny how you always see there's always there's always two sides, man. Because you know, here I was just talking about how bad sugar is and everything, and. Then yet when I was the way it makes your body synthesize proteins after right lift. exactly right when I was when I was doing more of my bodybuilding and, and whatnot back back uh, those are fun that, days that was that was good man that's actually one of my uh, new goals this year is to kind of get a little bit of that back sweet but uh, I'm hold you accountable to that yeah it's gonna go on yeah, the internet yeah I'm gonna get get myself back so uh, but yeah so there was we were there's a legitimate study and there's research done on the, the testing of uh, eating sugar right after an ex- a workout to increase your body's ability to synthesize protein, basically speed up the whole process. And, you know, this does have scientific, there is some backing on it. It she still did, does. She of, did touch base on this. Yeah. Um, she did. She basically said that shit like that is okay because yeah. it's in small moderation. That in your body. I think it was 20 grams of sugar, something like that. Mm-hmm. Not a lot. I remember when we were doing it, it was one of the, it was a mini Snickers, right? Yep. yep. It was something, it was we, a little, we, it was a little mini Snickers. Bar. Yeah. We just grab one and, and after a lift and, and just pound it down and, and just have a, your little, your little Snickers bar and a protein shake and watch everybody give you dirty looks when you're walking out of the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we tried it and I mean, I feel like it worked. Uh, you know, it. I mean, we, we've I was, tried so many different diets and different stuff. I, to. I still say to this day, the one that had the weirdest, best effect for me. Keto? Keto, yes. That worked really well. But no, when we started eating a steak before bed. Oh, yeah. That was a dude, fun one. We That was so awesome. That was a very expensive. I Anyone out there who's... Fitness. I had to if pick up so many to, extra shifts just to yeah, afford that diet. Yeah, if if anyone out there, if you're fitness trying to, you know, gain some muscle, lose body fat, if you just want to get a little bit of extra and you have a little bit of money to pay for it, I highly recommend it. It, it is crazy how much it works. Basically, the theory behind it is if you eat something like a steak before you go to bed, a steak has a very dense protein structure and it takes a long time for your body to digest it and your body actually will burn calories in your sleep digesting the steak if you just eat a steak so it your body actually because it's working so hard for you to get all of these this protein into your system and so when you wake up in the morning you feel lean you don't feel as sore from your workout the day before you've given your body a ton of protein and something to do 
all night while you're sleeping. So beneficial after like a large muscle group will exercise yeah. like legs or back. Yeah, it was it was really fantastic. I Dude, I remember we saw some results. I mean, not mm-hmm. to fucking toot these horns or whatever, but like every uh, goal that we had for ourselves, we seemed to have achieved at some point, and it was really fun. So if, if you guys ever really want to just challenge yourselves and just do something that you kind of want to get lost in for a year or two, yeah. Kind of just have little, little phases and shit. Try, try weightlifting because you can actually burn more calories uh, weightlifting than running. And we can and we can talk about that a lot more in another in another podcast. I could talk about that for hours. Yeah, no doubt. We'll <laughs> definitely uh, yeah. sometime um, here in the future we'll dedicate a podcast to that kind of shit, nutrition and stuff. So yeah. and we'll give everyone a heads up. So if they're not fucking, if they're already like way more shreds than us, yeah, they don't have to tune in at all. We'll give yeah. them a heads up. Yeah, but, but any who knows, you know, you might learn something you didn't know. Yeah. It's always always interesting. So, but yeah. to all you fucking hermits out there watching this shit at like three in the morning, yeah, I'm right there with you. But anyways, let's uh, let's wrap this bitch up, man. Yeah, let's let's get good. going to the ranch. Sounds let's have good. some fucking fun and yeah, go fuck some shit up. Go run around and find some critters and go do some dumb stuff. <laughs> Sounds good, Hold brother. Beer and watch right. this. Y'all, <laughs> y'all have a good one. Talk to you later. <laughs>